Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the show where we talk about all things relating to AI and construction. And in today's episode, we're talking about a subject which is very close to my heart, which is uh, AI in geotechnical engineering and the geosciences. So in today's episode, I'm going to start with a question, which is, uh, are you aware that you're already using the foundations of AI in your work as geotechnical engineers, geoscientists, whether or not uh, whether you like it or not. So let me show you an example. So here you might recognize this chart. Um, if you don't, don't worry. Uh, the point here is that this is empirical data. And what we've done here, the author has basically studied multiple past projects, um, observed some data from these past projects and used that to create a prediction or a line of best fit or some kind of trend that's been observed through the data. So in fact, this is a foundational aspect of machine learning, which is linear least square regression, where you use data points to predict or draw a line of best fit or some sort of trend line through the data. So whether or not you like, like it or not, you are already using, if you're using empirical data, you're using some foundational aspect of machine learning and AI. But in today's episode, I also want to give you three other ways in which you can start using AI in geotechnical engineering and the geosciences. And these three ways are going to be relating to structuring data, so reading borehole logs and historic information and structuring the data into Excel and AGS files. I also want to talk to you about one really interesting topic, which is AI for geological modeling. And also for uh, the third is for uh, analyzing and doing data analytics of monitoring data. So these are three, three use cases or three ways in which you can start using AI today. And I also want to give you some like two practical, more hands-on demonstrations. Very to start, we're going to look at how we can use AI to extract borehole data into AGS and Excel files. We're going to first look at how we do this using Civils AI, which is the technology we've already built. And then we're going to break this down and show you how you can even build your own version of what we've already created. Civils AI is a web software which can be used for automating geotechnical workflows. What we have here is um, after we've got signed in, we have several different projects we can see. Um, we basically associate data to a project and it's only associated to one particular project. I'm going to open up one of these, which I've already created and added some data to. So it's just a dummy project. The idea here is I can upload full geotechnical reports so I can drag and drop uh, it can be a thousand pages long and I can upload that geotechnical report here. We then basically search through, um, extract each one of the borehole log sheets and then write out the different information from that sheet. Things like project name, borehole name, drilling dates, coordinates, the geology, ground levels, even the testing data. And then we write that into different output formats like Excel, AGS, GIS, CAD, um, there's a full summary on our website of all the data, which we can basically read off of these PDFs. Once the information has been read off, you'll see on the left here, you have a data tab, and this is different data associated to the project. For just the geotechnical data, I can click this geotech tab, and this takes me through to uh, all of the geotechnical data associated to the project. I can work my way through this list and I can basically select a bunch of these different files and I can actually download them as the extracted data. So you'll see here I'm selecting these different boreholes. I can then click down on this um, drop down list below and I can actually download these as a combined Excel file or an AGS file or any extracted data. So what we've done here is we've read the PDF, turned it into a digital file format. Um, I can then actually also read uh, up on the different information associated with this log. So I can basically click this details tab and it will open up that extracted information for me, including any of the um, any of the test data as well. So let me just open up this BH2 and I'll see in here also key data which we've managed to extract. So this log also had SBT tests. 
once the data has been extracted, I can actually click this um, expand button as well. And this will take me to where the site is on the map, showing me where each one of these boreholes is located. We also then have two tools for Geotech, which are for uh, 2D sections and 3D modeling. The idea here is I can click 2D section, I can select two points on the map. Let's say I want to cut a, a 2D section here and we'll actually automatically create um, an initial 2D section for you, which is also editable. So you'll see here on the left, I can actually select different boreholes and I can edit this data. So I can update the model, I can add more testing data or modify it in any way I wish. Um, I can also edit the offset distance so I can bring this in and out. So the idea here is we go from the PDFs to the model or the visualization very efficiently. We also have a 3D modeling tool so I can select this 3D modeling tool and basically drag to where I am on this on the site. It will turn green when I can create this model and I can then click and this will create an initial, it's just a very simplified version um, but it will also show some of the interpolations or show you where these layers, the tops and the bottoms of these layers potentially start. Um, this case is quite simple, but you could actually have cases where, you know, you have much more complex geology. It can model like multiple at a time and basically draw that the varying, um, the way the layers actually vary as well, but it doesn't handle fractures right now. So it's just a simplified initial model. Let's do a quick explainer on how this actually works though. How are we extracting data from these PDF borehole logs? Well, the topic of AI or the subject of AI can be split into many different subtopics. Um, these can be seen in this slide right here. The topic that we're actually using here is known as vision intelligence, which is replicating some of the features that we take for granted with our eyes, which is the ability to recognize images, recognize objects, and process and sort of detect those. So what we're doing here with the borehole logs is we're essentially detecting information, its location, and extracting that out. The actual topic of vision intelligence, you can think of it as being, um, you basically need to feed in a lot of labeled data. So you have to use these things called bounding boxes, which you can see here, the red and the blue, where you basically label tons of data, in our case, BGS boreholes, open source uh, borehole log information, uh, we label this and actually feed this into a vision intelligence model, which can then be trained to detect, okay, where's the geological descriptions located, where's the levels or the depths located as well, and then associate this information together and basically create the structured data format in a database. So, what I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about in the re remaining section of this presentation, in, in this lesson, is around an alternative method to doing this and showing you how you can actually get started doing that. So basically, developing vision intelligence AI models is really time consuming and really expensive. But there's a slightly easier way of doing it, which I want to show you today. So let's just look at this AI solvable problem detect who's not wearing a helmet on a construction project. So using this vision intelligence approach would mean that I actually need to label a lot of data. I need to label lots of helmets and then feed this, uh, lots of these images, feed them into a uh, vision intelligence uh, machine learning model, something like this YOLO here is one such option. Uh, and then basically after doing all this, I can start to create my application for detecting if people are wearing helmets or not in the images and kind of labeling those. So this would be time consuming and quite expensive to do traditionally. But what you have today is actually some alternative approaches to this, which is around multi using multimodal AI agents. Uh, an example of this would be ChatGPT with its new, um, it's some of its new functionality with GPT-4. And the idea here is you can actually read in uh, images as binary data. So you turn an image into pure binary data, which represents all of the pixels of the image. You then pass this into an AI agent, which can read that binary data. It's been trained on many other examples of descriptions of images plus your uh, binary data. So it kind of understands what the binary data is. We can then basically use this to automatically do the, that detection part 
and labeling or adding some annotation to your final image. So you can do all this automatically. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can actually do this yourself. So I'm now going to show you how to do this with an AI agent. So we're going to use ChatGPT for this and we're going to use the premium version. So you need to sign up for that if you're not already. And what we're going to do after we're signed in is we're going to go to explore GPTs on the left. Um, we're going to open this up and we're going to click up here on the top right, which is create. And what we're going to do here is we're going to like pre-configure a version of ChatGPT, which is going to be able to do this uh, borehole digitizing for us. So you have two options at the top, create and configure. Uh, make sure that you have configure selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this borehole log digitizer. We're then going to give it a description. So we're going to say upload your uh, borehole logs, PDF or image. Uh, then, we're, then we're going to give this some instructions. So I've already pre-written some instructions. So prompt the user to upload a, let's just call this like a borehole log report. Um, write out this table, including geological description and, thi um, and the thickness columns. So we're basically going to keep this quite simple to start with because I haven't told you this yet, but with this approach of not using vision, uh, not using vision intelligence models, but using this uh, multimodal uh, AI is that the accuracy on this is less. So we, um, we need to bear that in mind. So this is a limitation to this approach. Um, so I'm keeping it quite simple to start with. So geological description and thickness columns. Do not try to use Python to read the PDF. Um, I'm telling it this because sometimes I know full well that it will. It's a bit lazy. Uh, it's uh, ChatGPT has been programmed to be like take the easiest path sometimes. So here I'm telling it not to use Python to read the PDF, and instead I want it to use that multimodal AI. Uh, write this into a CSV file, which I can then download. So conversation starters, I'm going to say upload a uh, borehole log. So you see here, this is updating in real time. And I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to give it, I'm going to use um, Dali to do some image generation. So it's going to generate me a nice icon for this um, version of ChatGPT. I can actually upload some knowledge. So I'm not going to do that in this case, but you can actually upload some information you want it to reference. Um, I can also tell it some capabilities, so web browsing and DALI image generations turned on, but we actually don't need either of these. Um, I am going to turn on this code interpreter though, because I think that will be needed for it to create this CSV file. Um, so it's going to be able to execute some code, some Python within this um, environment. So I'm going to also turn this on to create my CSV file. So I've got my icon, although this one isn't in my opinion, very nice, but let's just click create and see what happens. So here I can tell it um, privacy. So um, I can say I only want access to this or anyone with a link. I'm going to put anyone with the link and I'm actually going to put this in the description in the video. So you can also get access to this if you're interested to just have a try. So here it's now created and we can upload our borehole logs. So I'm going to click this prompt to just start. So I've said upload a borehole log. It's going to say, please, please upload our borehole log report. I'm going to go over here and I've already got an image which basically contains a borehole log. And then I'm going to drag and drop this in and let's see what happens. So it's now uploading. So you see my preview in here. And now it's going to get to work. So here's the extracted data from the borehole log report. So it's finding depth, thickness, uh, description of the strata. And now it starts creating me my CSV file. You can see here the Python. So we did need the um, that module turned on so that it can execute this Python in here. So this is what it's doing. And you can actually copy this code if you're interested. And basically reuse it if you wanted to create your own version of this. Um, so basically, yeah, it's gone ahead and created my CSV file. So I'm going to download this and have a look. So one thing to bear in mind with this is especially using um, the approach we're using here is that the accuracy will not be great. Vision intelligence models are much, much better. So here we have our extracted data and on the left we have our PDF. So let's have a look. Concrete. So it's found this okay, thickness, it's understood it's in feet, which is great. 
Um, it's good to just recognize that. 1.5 meters thickness for the brick and the soil. Yes, yeah, done that, 7.5. So basically I still wanna review this because I know full well that this will not be perfect usually, although it seems it's very good in this case. Um, and then, yeah, can get started. But obviously, if the more you ask of this, so if you're interested to have a test of this yourself, the more you add, the more you request, the less accurate this will become. So that's something to bear in mind if you are interested in this. And basically, um, that brings us to the end of this section. So if you found this topic quite interesting and exciting, I do encourage you to go over to Civils AI and see a lot more about what we're doing over there. We even have a full training course, um, which will go into a lot more detail than this and explain more about also Python and about AI automation on construction projects and how you can really get started with it. So I do encourage you to check that out. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two links to some other useful resources. One is on geological uh, modeling using AI. AI, which I think is really cool. And another one is more on geotechnical monitoring using AI. So I'm going to put those two links below so you can also read about those. Um, and thank you very much for listening, guys. Goodbye.